Hey, we're the Ohio Guys on Location at Yomacon in Detroit, Michigan. And today we're joined by John St. John, who just happens to be the king of Yomacon. I am, and the crown here proves the fact that I'm the king of Yomacon. I won it last year at a, uh, a competition in uh, Cards Against Humanity, which we call Guests Against Humanity here at uh, Yomacon. That's great. That's mm. great. What's your favorite thing about Halloween? We're asking everybody because it's Halloween weekend. Candy. Got to be the candy. I'm a chocolate freak. God, I love chocolate so much. I might be part chick. I don't know. But at least once a month, I got to have chocolate. So chocolate is uh, obviously, I have, it, I have it much more often than that. But at least <laughs> once a month. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was it like playing Duke Nukem? One of my first shooter games back in the day. Is that, well, you know, it was one of everybody's first shooter games, really, because how many shooter games had a voice before Duke Nukem 3D also? You know, can you remember any voices? No. no. So I'm kind of like the first real role-playing voice actor uh, character, Duke Nukem. Being Duke Nukem has been fantastic for me, man. Uh, the... the the notoriety of the series, uh, that it was so cutting edge in its day when it came out, that it was a top seller for such a long period of time. And that uh, even with Duke Nukem Forever, which I personally thought was awesome. I, thought, I liked I know it. The, I'm not going to lie. I liked it. That's okay. You know what? Whether you liked it or didn't like it, for all of those you, of you who did buy it, thanks for helping put my kids through school. I love you. <laughs> I do. Um, <laughs> So, no, it's been fantastic for me. I wouldn't be doing all of the conventions I do around the world if it weren't for the Duke Nukem character, so I'm eternally grateful to have landed that part. I'm very thankful to Lonnie Manella, who helped me get it, and to George Broussard, who listened in on the uh, auditioning process and, and said, yeah, he's the guy. So they really made uh, my convention career, and have certainly helped in video games over the years, too, because, you know, a lot of the, the, the kids who were playing Duke Nukem 3D when it came out are now the developers who are making all the really cool games, and they're fanboys of me. Mm -hmm. So that I think from time to time, I could be wrong, but I think they hire me just because they're fanboys. And that's fine. I'm good with that as long <laughs> as the paycheck is there, okay? That's all that matters. Yeah, Duke Nukem's been fantastic. What is your favorite Duke Nukem line? Um, and if you didn't already know this, most of the really great Duke Nukem lines, well, from the most recent game, were written by two women. No men wrote any of the scripts. Uh, except for maybe me, because I got to ad lib and they used some of my suggestions too. Um, but my favorite was from Duke Nukem Forever, and it's, I had eggs for breakfast. Your mom had sausage. I don't know why I like that one so much. I just do. And of course, you know, they adapted the old, I'll rip off your head and shoot, off, you know, shoot down your neck to, uh, I'll rip out your eyeball and piss on your brain. I really like that because the graphics in the game really brought that home. Haven't you always wanted to piss on somebody's brain through their <laughs> eye socket after you kill them? Really, wouldn't you? Wait, that's wait. victory, baby. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's, no, that's, that's great. I love it. Oh. Um, what's it like being a radio team? That was a lot of fun. Uh, today, being a radio G DJ sucks, I would imagine. It's not a real good career choice for anybody. It's uh, all corporate, and you know what corporate means is you're reading the cards they wrote for you and yeah. playing the songs they tell you to play. Blah, 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 blah. But when I was a DJ, a baby DJ, and I was 14 years old when I started in a small town in North Carolina, Jacksonville, North Carolina, I was very lucky to get on the radio, but I had a good long 20-year career before corporate America took over. And it was fantastic when I had the freedom to do what I wanted to do. I mean, I got fired from a lot of radio jobs because of things I said. Uh, I'll never regret it because I said some funny shit a long time before Howard Stern was ever a hit on the radio. <laughs> you know, I was working at a radio station in the Bible Belt, you know, Virginia, Williamsburg, Virginia. And I played uh, uh, Come Together by the Beatles. And I'm like, WBCI and the Beatles come together. Well, there's a good trick if you can do it. <laughs> They don't like that <laughs> in 1970-whatever-year in it was in the Bible Belt. So I got fired a lot doing stuff like that, <laughs> kind of blue humor before it was acceptable because the FCC frowned on it, and of course the Southern Baptists hated me when they heard me on the radio. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I loved it, though. <laughs> radio was a great career back in the day. Today it's, it's monkeys pushing buttons reading cards. No offense, monkeys. If you could be any of the characters you've played in real life, who would it be? In Duke Nukem. Yeah. You and what? Oh, I'm sorry. There was a, a part two to you that. You could mix and match if you wanted to. I, I would be Duke Nukem, but for, and what was the other part? You can mix and match them if you want to. Mix and match? Uh, who would I? I may be a little of Simon Gruber from uh, the Die Hard trilogy, because his attitude was even pissier than, so Duke, but with a, 
pissy attitude, not just a pure anger attitude. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if I could combine those two, that would be bitching. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, is there anything you can, coming out you can talk about right now or anything that might have recently come out that you want to plug? Uh, I'll talk about uh, there's more new uh, Guild Wars 2 content out there right now. I have several characters in that game. Uh, I landed some new characters on Star Trek Online. So in addition to being Ambassador Bavat, you know, the Klingon Ambassador, I have uh, several new parts of which I can't remember the names. I'm so sorry. There's too many characters and too, uh, hey, too little understand. brain cells to remember the names anymore. <laughs> Um, let's see what else. Mo most of the work I do, you know, is uh, commercial work and infomercial and imaging and that kind of stuff. So video games, very small part of what I do. Um, the Lipton Brisk Tea commercials that are all over the country right now where I go, that's Brisk, baby! So those are, those are all over the place again on the internet and on TV and radio. So, you know, there's a lot of commercial stuff I could talk about, but that's kind of boring because this is Yomacon and you want to hear about games, right? Um, it's fine. Well, that's about all the game news I have. Sorry, there is more. There are two things I'm working on, and I've signed you know non-disclosure yeah. agreements, so I can't talk about them. Um, but one thing I am excited about is that Interceptor has finally bought 3D Realms outright, okay. and it looks like there's possibly resolution in the future between Gearbox and 3D Realms with this one title they're fighting over. I, I can't mention titles, you know. Yeah. Um, but if it does get resolved, then new Duke Nukem. Uh, games are a possibility down the road. I just hope it's before I'm 80 years old. Because <laughs> I don't know if I can do Duke Nukem's voice. And he, I've got balls that hang. That's probably going to be his, uh, <laughs> his phrase by the time they get another fucking game together. I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? Um, <laughs> you don't have to edit that. I'm just kidding. And they know it. So... Um, Facebook, Twitter, or any other social medias for the fans? Uh, I wish all fans would just friend me on Facebook. I, I love having fans. That's fine. I like to spread news about when I have new uh, you know, games coming out and, and uh, downloadable content and appearances and that kind of stuff. It just helps perpetuate John St. John. <laughs> and since I am a, uh, an attention whore, that's really the point. So <laughs> go ahead. Friend me on Facebook. I friend everybody. Okay. We'd like to thank you for joining us today. Oh, I'd like to thank you for having me. It's been great. I'm Mike. He's I'm John, John. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Hopefully you get to keep your crown. A pleasure. Oh, I hope so. I hope I see you next year wearing this thing. Otherwise, next year's interview will just look kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs>